Om Jnana Timirandhasya Jnana Shalakaya Chakshul Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Suswagatam, welcome to all the arriving devotees from various parts of Punya Bhumi, Bharata Bhumi. At least it's Punya Bhumi because you are chanting Hare Krishna, otherwise it would be completely Pap Bhumi, the way things are going. And devotees also from different parts of the world. So, welcome to all and congratulations to all who have been, especially those engaged in Srila Prabhupada's book marathon. We have devotees here who are participating in Slovenia, which you probably never heard of. The total population is, yeah, about uh, a quarter of Chennai. The world is engaged in Sweden, doing book distribution marathon there. But I'm telling all the devotees about the Suratin, who made a target to distribute 11,111 Bhagavad Gita's in December. They're all households, so they're working all day. And they come out in the evening, and they didn't distribute 11,111. It was a good idea. But they didn't. They destroyed in more. So, it's still Punya Bhumi, underneath all the park. Still there's interest in Bhagavad Gita. But we have to distribute books very quickly, otherwise it's really gonna be finished. The way things are the whole world, it's just miserable. Even Slovenia was Relatively civilized up until recently, but now it's become part of the Europe. What's it called? European Rakshasa community. They were better off when it was officially atheism. It seems it was officially atheism, no, but it wasn't encouraged religion during the. You don't know. You were a young child, wasn't it? When it all changed. Anyway, we have to distribute Prabhupada's books more and more. This temple here, <coughs> the main opulence, what do you think it is? The, the chandeliers, yes, yeah, the book distribution. The deities, Krishna is here. But people won't even understand this is Krishna. They'll come and look at, I saw your nice statues. They will say, very nicely decorated statues. Or idols is the word they use. So unless they get Prabhupada's books, they won't be able to. They'll pasha napina pashati. They'll see what they won't see. They'll see with the mamsadrik, the eyes made of flesh, not premanjana churita bhakti vilocha. They won't see with the eyes of prem. So we have to push on this book distribution. The main opulence of this temple is going right there. You see? Yeah. Carrying more books for distribution. Kishore? Is Kishore here? Ah, just came. I wanted to see you in the day. Do you have pen and paper with you? Okay. Uh, Please, you can make some notes of this lecture and I'd like you to make a summary of it. If someone sent me an email with some questions and it's too much to write an email, you have to write a book practically to reply to it. So I thought I'd 
give a class and then you can make a summary and you can send it. It's from a uh, very sincere but perennially confused disciple. Perennially, do you know what that means? It means again and again becoming confused. Everyone in this material world is confused, but amidst all this confusion, if we go on chanting Hare Krishna, there will come a time when the confusion will go away. Tada rajas tamo bhava kama lo bhada yasche chaye cheta etaya na vidham What's the one saying? Sitam satvam proceeded. Yeah, then we become... Of course, this is... Okay, so uh, I'll try and summarize this. Uh, a letter from Russia. As you know, Russia is a very big country. We think India is a big country, but Russia is much bigger. And devotees are spread all over the country. And many of them, they don't get much association. Of, one thing is in India, of course devotees have difficulties here, but there are lots of devotees. And you can go to, it's not very far to go. Of course some of you came, some came from Punjab, which is how much? 40 hours journey? Some devotees came back. Is it from Batala? Anyone? No, no one came from Batala. From Rajpur? Maybe like that. 40 hours approximately journey. But in Russia, if you want to go to a big festival, that big festival is there. Once a year they have. Some devotees are coming, traveling more than one week. They have trained train service, train from Vladivostok, there's even further than Vladivostok, to Moscow, and then again down to the south. For the train from uh, Siberia, it takes more than seven days. So they really, and it may be in one town, there's, you know, 15, 20 devotees, they're all scattered all over the place. So, at least in India, there's can come to some festivals and have association. There are many devotees. But then, devotees there are, there are many devotees, but that many of them are scattered all around. So, um, lack of guidance can be a problem. You can imagine. It's, uh, it's a, it's a problem throughout the whole world of ISKCON that the movement keeps on growing very quickly despite various problems that our movement faces which are not surprising in this horrible age of Kali but nevertheless the movement keeps on expanding but the number of senior, mature devotees competent to give guidance doesn't, the number doesn't keep up with the number of new people who are coming and need guidance. So that's true throughout the world. And various results are that some devotees are left without guidance and they become weaker or some devotees who are not so qualified, they give not very good guidance, or uh, some devotees, they try, you know, they're trying to give guidance, but they themselves, we all need guidance. So, there are various problems. But it's better than having the problem of having no devotees. If we preach 
So many devotees will come and there will be so many problems. But if we don't reach, then the problem is that everyone goes to hell. So that's a worse problem. I was in one center recently, and there, it's one of those centers where there are more deities than devotees. <laughs> and I was saying, you know, why don't you, you know, preach and get some devotees, and at least you could import some from Bangladesh, that's the usual thing that's done. A lot of ISKCON in India runs on Bangladeshi shakti, cooking and doing deity worship. So at least do. The devotee said, no, actually it's quite nice, you know, more devotees, more problems. We're, everything's okay. So we're, we're peaceful. Well, uh, what did you build it? I asked, then I asked him, what, what did you build a temple for? If you just want to be peaceful, you don't need a big temple like this. You can just sit anywhere, go to the jungle and be peaceful. This temple, this was a very peaceful spot here. Now it's not peaceful. 10,000 people coming a day. That's not very peaceful, is it? But they're all coming and they're getting darshan of Radha Govinda, getting Prabhupada's books. So this, and there's problems, no doubt. It's not an easy thing to manage these temples. But we have to do it. We have to preach. We have to try and spread this movement. So there will be problems. Don't expect there won't be problems. But we prefer the problems of that come from preaching that the problem than the problems that don't come from preaching. Anyway there will be problems. So that's the mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to spread this movement. But I was saying just, yeah, let's get back to Russia. So, um, yeah, this, this is uh, one devotee who's been uh, actually one of my earliest disciples in Russia. He's uh, probably about, I'm not sure exactly, maybe about 20 years now. And uh, one's guidance, but another another way that uh, the, the problem of giving guidance is compounded by, uh, in this case, by language difficulties, because you know, I've got this email which it looks like it's translated by a computer, and computers, they don't give very good translations. So I have to try and understand what it means, and then I'll give some reply, and then that will get translated back by a computer also. So, uh, anyway, somehow or other, we have to try and communicate. Srila Prabhupada told that story. Actually, it was told by Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur. It may have been told by previous Acharyas also. That when, if there are some foreigners living in a country, they don't know the language, and their house is, catches on fire, somehow or other they'll communicate to others that they need some help. Somehow or other, the, the, the matter is so urgent that the communi- they'll communicate that. <laughs> somehow or other they'll make it know that there's some major problem and they need some help. So... Ultimately, communication on the spiritual platform, there's no bar of language. At the same time, language is important. Language is the means of communication. The, the means or the, at least the, the external form of communication is by means of language. And the, uh, internally what is to be communicated is Love of Krishna. Mm. But uh, language, that's important. Language conveys ideas, feelings. That's why it's very important the, the books are translated as well as possible. 
It's important. Otherwise, the proper idea won't come through. We have that problem in most languages. That the, the, there's always at least some in many languages. There's some problem with the translation. Often, the what happens is we preach in a country, and some people come forward and they become devotees, and then they're new devotees. They don't really understand the philosophy very well, and they're translating. They may not be very expert in. English or in the, their own language, and they're, they're translating somehow or other. Or we hire scholars. So, at least in India, uh, many of the languages, the books, they're being retranslated now because we're distributing them. But the full effect is not there because of the the uh, language. As the, the translations have not been. Very or as good as they could be. So anyway, um, there's some background to the preaching Krishna consciousness in the modern age. It's it's not such an easy thing. It's getting easier. The more we preach, the cumulative effect of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement is uh, it's a geometric ge- geometric progression. It gets better and better. Otherwise, in the beginning, Srila Prabhupada had to, we can't imagine how much struggle was there. Nowadays in India, it's uh, so many people that want to take up Krishna consciousness. It's a little preaching. People will take it up. We can't keep up with it. All. But when I first came, I came Later than, I mean, I didn't come in the beginning of establishing Prabhupada's movement in India, but I came to stay in India in 1976. And it was tough. It was very difficult preaching in those days. Mostly we got the response, I am a born Hindu. I know everything about Krishna. Or you cannot be, you cannot be a Hindu. Maybe in your next life. I said, Actually, I don't want to be a Hindu, but. <laughs> but uh, this attitude, I know everything. We already know. We are born Hindu. You are converted Hindus. That was a charitable remark. If they accepted us as converted Hindus, otherwise you cannot be a Hindu. That was the standard response. And the Advaita Bad was so tough. I mean, nowadays we can go and tell clearly, Krishna is supreme. There is no one and nothing superior to Krishna. And many people accept, yes. And and tell them, this idea, everything is one, all the gods are one, we are all God, this is all bogus. And people will accept it. But in those days, oh, it was, I mean, it was very tough. But they say, no, 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 you don't understand... You see, we are born Hindu. We know. You don't know. Very, very tough. Everywhere. And people are generally respectful. In those days, not, at least in the areas I was in, not very respectful. Many people. We had our shikas pulled a lot by young men as a joke. And so many things. And anyway, I won't go on, it becomes better and better and better, but it's not easy. Gallons of blood, that's another Bhakti Siddhanta Sraktako saying that, Srila Prabhupada used to say that too. To take one person out of Maya, take gallons of blood have to be spent. Liters of blood. So, uh, one devotee, it's, it's being mentioned here, he's fairly junior in terms of time in the movement, but he's an enthusiastic preacher, responsible family man, young man. So he's 
preaching Krishna conscious in various areas. And the devotee who's written to me has written about him that he has said that that uh, although the disciples they are pupils of the guru but they shouldn't remain in the infant class forever. They should become adult. And not that they're always on a basic level, but they have to, t- they have to take also responsibility for preaching and guiding others. And it's, it's not that, that, anyway, this is the implication of that, that devotees should become adult in devotional service. So, he's doing that, he's, traveling to different places and giving seminars, guiding devotees. So, uh, this other devotee, the, the devotee who I was speaking about, Rohini Kumar Prabhu, he was saying this to another devotee who's written this letter to me, Nagna Jiti. So she asked him that How can I find out what service the Guru wants me to do? And it sometimes seems to me, this is a very Russian comment, common in Russia, that there is some uh, psychic energy level in which I'm getting instructions from the Guru, or I feel it within, it's quite common in Russia, isn't it? What's the word in Russia? Psychic? Something like that. Something like that, yeah. So, we hear this term. It's very popular among the Russian people, not just devotees. They're uh, spiritually inclined. Actually, the culture is... Pre-communist Russia, they were... Intensely Christian, very, very religious people. So it, it, she's saying, I feel in my heart that Guru is telling me to do some service. And if I think, oh, that's not practical, I won't do it, then I get some reaction, see, some bad reaction. Bad weather, I get family problems, difficulties on Sankirtan, because she goes out and distributes these magazines. I think the magazine is produced by Odarya Dham Prabhu. He makes some magazine? Isn't it? Odarya Dham? Yeah. It's something. There, there are so many magazines. Devotees are producing various kind of somewhat Krishna conscious magazines. You know, Ayurved and Psychic, all mixed up. So, she's asking, is my feeling, is it real? That I'm getting this instruction? Or is it my imagination? Should I... Uh, is the reaction I'm getting for not following it, is it a reality? Who gives me such orders if they are real? Can I read spiritual literature about such ways of dialogue. Can this spiritual master influence the weather? She was saying bad weather is a reaction. Or can we openly discuss about these things? So, yeah, well if you don't get direct guidance or regular guidance then 
you might think, well, I'm getting some psychic guidance. And that may be there also. The general, simple, straightforward process of Krishna consciousness is to chant minimum 16 rounds of the Hare Krishna mantra every day, associate with devotees, regularly study Prabhupada's books, hear from devotees. It's a simple, straightforward process. But it as I was saying, it may be difficult in some circumstances. If, if you have family responsibilities, you only have once a week association with devotees because they're all spread out in some big city and everyone's busy working in their family and they only meet once a week. So it may be difficult to follow very uh, strictly and if other another thing is other members of the family are not Krishna conscious. And uh, you may say, well, you should just be strong, but realistically speaking, not everyone is very strong. Some people, everyone's struggling and some are struggling more than others. As far as psychic or sp- spiritual uh, well, the, the whole Krishna conscious tradition is full of what we could call paranormal occurrences. In Chaitanya Charitamrita we have Madhavendra Puri. Krishna comes to him in a dream and orders him that you go to Puri and bring Chanda. Now you might think, that was, that was just a bad dream. I don't, you know, who wants to walk all the way to... Walk to Puri. Now you can go on the... Go to Delhi and get a train 30 hours, 36 hours. But walking... And the, it was all... Most of the land was ruled by Muslims. And, and you never know how, you know how they're going to treat you... Or, so, but, yeah, okay, he ordered me. He went. So that, Nityananda Prabhu came to Krishnadas Kaviraj and told him to go to Vrindavan. Everything, all your desires will be fulfilled there. He went to Vrindavan. He was ordered by the Vaishnavas to compose Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. He went to get blessings from Madan Mohan, deity. And at that time the flower garland, just at that time the flower garland fell down from Madan Mohan and Pujari gave it to him and he took, this is the blessings of Madan Mohan. Similarly, uh, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur was praying to Jagannath that you send someone to help me in this mission spreading Krishna consciousness. And his own child was born with the uh, Yagyopavita, Brahmin thread, his umbilical cord was wrapped like that. And the astrologer said that this is great personality. And then about six months later, the Jagannath's Ratham stopped in front of his house, which it always does, I'm told. Still, oh, Jagannath always stops them by his own will. That time he stopped. Then they organized the Sankirtan Mahotsa and Bhaktivinoda Thakur's wife brought the young child and placed her at the feet of Jagannath and immediately the flower garland fell down. So he un- then he understood that this J- Jagannath is telling us like this that this is his very dear disciple. 
his very dear devotee. So like this, the, the whole Vaishnav tradition is, is full of what students of the paranormal would call paranormal occurrences. Srila Prabhupada, in a dream, his Guru Maharaj came, said, come with me. He thought, Guru Maharaj is calling me to take sannyas. And he was avoiding, Prabhupada explained. But then when my godbrother forced me, then he could understand that in the dream, my guru is calling me. And then through my godbrother, he's, he's forcing me. So I have to accept. Then when he was going to America, on the ship, he suffered two heart attacks. And in a dream, Krishna, in his uh, various forms, was rowing the boat and told him, Don't worry. I'm rowing the boat. You don't worry. I'm taking you across. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. There are so many. He was feeling discouraged. He'd been ordered to preach by Bhakti Nau Thakur and Gorki Shodas Babaji Maharaj, his two gurus. They'd, they'd both passed away and he found the whole world is just full of Achaitanya uh, Vidang Vishwam, full of people who are not Krishna conscious. So he tried to preach, but he was the, the, the sahajiyas was so strongly against him. He was feeling discouraged. Then one day he saw a piece of paper uh, just blowing around in Mayapur. Those days there was nothing in Mayapur. There was just some rice fields. And a piece of paper, there wouldn't be, it's a little piece. He found it was a piece of Chaitanya Charitamrita, which was written, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's instructions to Sanatana Goswami, which were the same that Bhakti Nautaka had given to him. Lupta Tirtha Udha, Bhakti Granta Pracha, to revive the holy places and preach according to the bhakti grantas, the books. Make the books. And then in a dream, he, uh, all the panchatattva, all the great acharyas, he came and he was thinking, you know, what, what am I going to do? I don't have any support. I don't have any manpower. I don't have any... Uh, I don't have any money, I don't, I'm just, what can I do? They say, don't worry, we're with you. Everything you need will, will come, everything will be provided. So that experience, then, uh, so like that. So we may think, well, that's the great devotees, but what about us? But that we're also finding, that many devotees are, are reporting they have had dreams of Srila Prabhupada, telling them, encouraging them, many devotees. And, uh, and many, myself and many of Prabhupada's disciples are also experiencing that devotees are telling them that in their dream, I came or one of my godbrothers came and gave some instruction which I'm not aware of but Krishna has super soul as arranging to speak like that. So these things do happen. Of course, if you have a dream and in the dream some you think you had some sadhu and he tells you to uh, stop chanting Hare Krishna then you can know that's that's not Prabhupada. Because he'll never tell you to stop chanting. But uh, if it's some relevant instruction, then we can take it. Prabhupada said that dreams are generally nonsense. But if this spiritual master is there, 
then you can take that as spiritual. So these things are there. But they are not the substance of spiritual life. It's not that you have to wait for some dream. It's, everything is there. Another time, Prabhupada, he was uh, someone, he, someone had told him or, that uh, some some woman was in the temple of Jagannath and she was saying, Jagannath is pulling my sari. Prabhupada said, what? He said, this, this ugly woman and Jagannath's going to be a, attracted and pulling her sari. <laughs> he said, as far as I'm concerned, I never had any such thing. Although actually he did. He had the dream on the Jaladuta. He said, I never had such thing. As far as I'm concerned, I simply had faith in the words of my spiritual master. That's all. So, these it's not necessary. We don't have to wait. Just like some people tell us that, yeah, yeah, I, I like, I'd also, I'd also like to be Krishna conscious. When Krishna tells me, I'll start chanting Hare Krishna. He's already he's telling you all the time, you rascal. But you don't want to do it. He's there in Bhagavad Gita. All the devotees are coming. He says, Krishna has to come and personally touch my feet and beg me and then I'll pat him on the head and then I'll agree to chant Hare Krishna. You rascal. He's telling you all the time. You say, oh, when Krishna shows me his mercy. In other words, it's not my fault I'm not chanting Hare Krishna. It's Krishna's fault because he didn't give me his mercy. So this is all rascal then. Under the guise of piety. It sounds like, oh, see, he's very, has a lot of faith in Krishna. He's waiting for Krishna to give the mercy. This is just an excuse for being a rascal. And, and if a rascal says I'm a rascal, then he's not as bad a rascal as someone who pretends to be pious and is still a rascal. So these, these things, they're, it may be there. If we have a dream of Srila Prabhupada or any devotee giving us instruction, um, that's very nice. But we, the instructions are here. <laughs> when we wake up, we can read Bhagavad Gita as it is. And we'll get all the instructions. In Srila Prabhupada Nilamrita, it's recorded that Brahmananda Prabhu, famous as one of the early disciples of Prabhupada, in the very early days of Iskam, uh, he would sometimes be talking to Srila Prabhupada and then he would come and tell the devotees, Oh, Prabhupada told me something that you never heard before. Then he'd tell it and someone would say, Well, I read that in the book. You already said it in the book. And as Prabhupada said that uh, shortly before Prabhupada passed away, Prabhupada said, I have nothing new to say. Everything I wanted to say is in my books. It's there. So, sometimes we hear about the final order. There are so many orders. None of them are final. They're all ongoing. All the orders of Prabhupada, they're all in his books. So it's all there. And if we get a dream, that's nice. I also had two years ago or something in which Prabhupada told me to write books. So, educational and philosophical books. So that's nice. That's confirmed what I felt in my heart. Prabhupada wanted me to do. So that's nice. But of course it's already there in Prabhupada's books in which he writes that the foremost duty of a sannyasi is to make a literary contribution for the benefit of human society. So it's already there. But it's nice. 
So all the instructions are there. And we may get some feeling that Prabhupada wants me to do this. But uh, we should know most of the, th- I mean the basic things that Prabhupada wanted us to do are to chant the holy names of Krishna, associate with devotees, or Chaitanya Mahaprabhu summed it up. The whole purpose of Isko, Janma Sata Kori Koro Poro Upakam. We should practice Krishna consciousness according to the standard method given by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, transmitted through all the Acharyas, given by Srila Prabhupada. We should practice that, chanting the holy names of Krishna, associating with devotees, taking Krishna prasadam, and koro para upaka, act for the benefit of others. Try to bring others to this process of Krishna consciousness. So the process is simple. Chanting Hare Krishna is not difficult. At least it's not physically difficult, although due to our contaminated minds we may find it difficult. Um, Taking Krishna Prasad is generally not very difficult. That's the easiest process. Associating with devotees, sometimes difficult, but uh, if we chant more and talk Prajalpa less, then it becomes easier. It becomes difficult when we stop chanting, <laughs> when we start thinking, Ahamma meti, I, me, and mine. The associate. So all these processes are easy to follow and preaching Krishna consciousness, that's the sum and substance of what is this gone for? Ourselves we should practice Krishna consciousness and we should act in a way to benefit others. So basically it's very simple. But it becomes, or we we may find it complex because life in the modern world tends to be very complex. And even if the circumstances around us are not complex, which in many cases it is, just there may be so much, uh, just like here in India it's very common, people want to practice Krishna conscious, but by force of circumstance they have to work six days a week and including traveling, it takes, it's like 16 hours a day. It's normal. So people literally don't have to, it requires time to practice sadhana. But literally, many people don't have time. So that's a difficult. Or it may be that we want to practice, but uh, our wife doesn't want us to, she doesn't, the husband doesn't want us to, the children don't want us to, the parents don't want us to, or oh, like this. There may be so many restrictions. We get drafted in the army, it can be very difficult. Still going on. In Russia, still. Every young man has to go to the army for two years, two or more. But they're quite favorable now. They know the Krishnaites. But it depends on the officer you get. If he's nasty, then you're really in for a hard time. Uh, So yeah, the world around us may be complex. It may be various difficult conditions. Or, even if there are not difficulties all around us, difficulties arise because of our own minds. 
even if the situation is favorable for practicing Krishna consciousness, then because of our own rascal minds, we, uh, we find it difficult. So, various difficulties may arise and we need guidance. Everyone needs guidance. Um, yeah, the process is simple. We should stick to the basic process. That will help us through all difficulties. If we make the vow that whatever happens, I'll go on, I must chant these rounds, I vow that I must chant 16 rounds, I must study Prabhupada's books, I must associate with devotees, I must do, I must remain in Krishna Krishna's, whatever happens, I have to, I'll do this. If we stick to that, then Krishna will be pleased. And however difficult the situation may be, the time will come by Krishna's grace. Aham tu rishami duram tu param. We'll cross over all of this. Krishna will take us across. If we have faith in Krishna, in the holy name of Krishna, in the Vaishnavas, in the process of bhakti, if we continue, definitely Krishna will help us. That faith we should have. And to stick to the basic process. What happens is, uh, often devotees, they become sidetracked by some uh, so-called shortcuts that if you just you have to do some special mystic yoga that will help to control the mind. Or so I, anyway, it may be done. I mean, for health, it may be someone may do pranayama or yoga or something like that. There may be. In this material world, there are many things which can help us in many ways, such as yoga, or uh, various diets, Ayurveda, astrology, Vastu. There are so many things which are given by God to help us make our difficult journey in this material world a little easier. But we can become sidetracked by all these things. Just like often we see people, they'll spend so much money to call a Vastu expert. I know about these Vastu experts. They're all self-made. They all pick up a book and read it and become an expert. I don't have much faith in this kind of expert. Vedic culture is you have to be trained by a guru in every subject. So anyway, you call a Vastu expert and give him 10,000 rupees and then you knock, you, you fill up the window on one wall and put it on the other wall and spend another 10,000 rupees. And that's supposed to solve all your problems. I am not very convinced about this. And even if it does help, I would say take the 20,000 rupees and call the devotees, have Sankirtan, Give them prasadam and sponsor for book distribution and you'll get Krishna's blessings. And even if you have more difficulties because the window's on the wrong side, you'll get blessings from Krishna. <laughs> so, I'm not saying that Vastu Shastra is all wrong and everything, but it's a matter of keeping everything in perspective. So these things, they can be done. There are so many things. 
gems and you can put gems, you can wear some gem and it's supposed to counteract your Rahu period or something. But there's one thing which is much better than a five lakh gem is chanting Hare Krishna. That's instead of spending money on a gem you can chant Hare Krishna. Jai Shoko Bipur Bhakti Vinod Balen Joko No Namga Radha Krishna Bolbo Bolo Reshub By chanting Hare Krishna all the difficulties go away. Well, I'm chanting Hare Krishna already and they're not going away. That means we're not chanting Hare Krishna. Because actually, if we chant Hare Krishna, we don't often say this, but actually, it may be that our problems will increase. We don't often say that because then people will think, then what am I going to chant Hare Krishna for? I'll, you know, I'll go to Sai Baba instead. Better. My problems will increase. But actually, it often happens. And people come and say, I'm chanting Hare Krishna, problems are getting... We say, good, very good, very good. Glad to hear it. Glad to hear that your problems are increasing. <laughs> Why? Well, that's the sign that Krishna is giving you his mercy. All the problems go away is we realize, if we actually chant Hare Krishna then we realize that we don't have any problem actually except that we're not attached to chant Hare Krishna. That's the only real problem. There is no other problem. One time one devotee came to Prabhupada and said, well, I've got jaundice. Prabhupada said, you don't have jaundice. I do, I'm yellow. Prabhupada said, you don't have jaundice. My eyes are yellow, my stool is yellow, urine is yellow. No, you don't have John. It's just your imagination. <laughs> so, what's true? It's true he had John. But from the transcendental level, he didn't have John. So Prabhupada was telling him, you don't have John. You think you're that body. That body's got jaundice, but you don't have jaundice. So, of course, it's not very easy to come to that platform immediately. That is the actual platform that we come to by the gradual process of Krishna consciousness. And it is gradual. And... What is that? Uh, Shri Bhakti Marga. Shri Bhakti Marga Kantaka Koti Rudha. In this Kali Yoga, on the path of Bhakti, there are many, many thorns. Many difficulties will be there. Undoubtedly. But those difficulties which defeat the non-defaulties, they are the, that is the path. The path of bhakti is made up of difficulties. The stones are the difficulties. And by taking help from Krishna, we walk on the difficulties, over the difficulties, and go to Krishna. If there are no difficulties, then it's it's not the actual bhakti mara. So what to do? Should uh, someone who has very little direct guidance, living among non-devotees, trying to be Krishna conscious, what are they to understand when they get some psychic intuition? that I should do this. And if they don't do this, it seems they get some punishment. The, the Guru has sent, I don't know whether to talk about bad weather in Russia. I mean, it's, all, it's always, I mean, at this time of year, maybe it goes from minus 30 to minus 40. 
Does it make much difference when it goes from minus 30 to 40? You don't know, you're from South Russia. You can tell me. It makes a difference. It feels worse. No one goes out at all. But in minus, I was there when it was minus 30. They still go out, just about. But minus 40 is really, it's, it's dangerous actually. It's probably dangerous to go out, is it? If you breathe, just by breathing you can die. Eh? Yeah. So. Now it's, what temperature is it there? Minus 20 at least. Yeah. You can't imagine. Here in South India, you can't imagine. In Punjab, I was told it's 0.8 degree above. But they can't imagine. Minus 20 in Slovenia also. Not that cold? No. In the hills? No. Anyway, it's damn cold enough. I was there in the winter once. Snow everywhere. So, uh, does the guru control the weather? Uh, well, <laughs> not, not this one. <laughs> I'm not, uh, you know, sitting on a cloud and sending snow on Ulyanovs where Nagnajiti lives. But uh, Krishna is the supreme controller and yomam pashati sarvatra sarvam charmai pashati tasyaham na pranashami sachame na pranashati One who sees me everywhere and everything in me, I never lost to him, he is never lost to me. So, one who sees Krishna everywhere, he sees, just like Prabhupada, when the bombs were falling on Calcutta, Prabhupada saw, this is Krishna. Everyone else, they thought, they didn't see God, they thought, this is death. Prabhupada, this is Krishna. Come to the bomb shop. I'll take my prasad, I'll go later. Prabhupada thought, Rake Krishna, Mare, Mare Krishna, Rake Krishna. I'll take prasad, I'll go to the bomb shelter after. So, if we can see Krishna everywhere, then we may see that, well, I was supposed to do some service, I didn't do it. No. Krishna, of course, you may not think that I'm so important that Krishna is arranging the weather just to punish me. But one who sees Krishna sees that uh, some difficulty is that he sees that Krishna is uh, testing me. Krishna is in this way showing me what I should be doing. What we should be doing. If we get some inspiration, I should distribute Prabhupada's books. We can, you don't need to get some psychic confirmation. We know for sure he wants us to do that. But uh, but even that, just like a few days ago, uh, one devotee was asking me that um, he's a Hindu lady that we're going for book distribution, and uh, you know, on one hand, women are supposed to be shy; on the other hand, we're going for book distribution. So, is it all right? So, I said, yeah, it's all right. Uh, ladies shouldn't go alone. But actually, traditionally, uh, women would never go door to door, knocking on... But considering that the condition of human society is so fallen, it's an emergency. So, go for... Yes, you can do Take permission from your husband and do that. But also don't neglect your family. Don't say, I, I have to do book distribution so I'm not going to feed my family. They can look out. 
all everything has to be balanced. So Sri Dharma is very important. It's interesting this letter is coming from a devotee who's living alone without husband and that's another difficulty. Many women have nowadays it become it's very difficult for women if they don't have a man to guide them. Of course sometimes the man is also if he's not a devotee or sometimes even if he is a devotee the, the mind is so disturbed. The men are also they need to be guided. But in general women they need some guidance and she doesn't have that and so I'm not recommending that she get married. I mean, she's already over 40 years old. But uh, it, it's, it's also more difficult. But uh, yeah, some basic common sense can be there also. I don't know what kind of psychic instruction you're getting, but if the instruction is there, rise early, chant your rounds, try to cooperate with the devotees to distribute these books so we can understand. Yeah, that's a good instruction. We should take that. Sometimes devotees have some very you know, uh, bizarre ideas, not very realistic. It may sound good, but it may not be very realistic. Or it may it may be some big idea. I should. Uh, I I got some inspiration that I should go and preach to the uh, Musharraf in Pakistan. I should go and tell him that don't be such a demon and tell all the people to chant Hare Krishna, stop killing them. So. Something like that. It's a good idea, but it should be confirmed by others. <laughs> because it might not be such a good idea. It might not be the best preaching policy to do that. It might just be your imag imagination. That I got some inspiration. I should go and do... We should form a Harinam Sankitan party in Riyadh, in Saudi Arabia and go on the streets and chant Hare Krishna. Yeah, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted that, but maybe we should take some confirmation. Maybe the time is not right, because you're liable to get executed, literally, for preaching any religion apart from Islam in Saudi Arabia, the punishment is death. In Pakistan also. In many, several Muslims. So, I'm just giving that as an example. That you may think that, I got this inspiration that I should, I should form a Harinam party in Saudi Arabia. So, something which is unusual, Better to get that confirmed. Don't just do it on whim. But basic things, we can uh, take that as a, if we get some paranormal instruction, we can take yes. That's good. And we should do the basic things. We shouldn't think that we can, if we're not chanting, 16 rounds, we're not taking only Krishna Prasadam, we're not regularly studying Prabhupada's books, then we don't think that we're going to get an order to deliver all the Muslims. Let's do the basic things first. So there's some thoughts on this topic. If you get a dream of Krishna, very nice. But when you wake up, you have to serve Krishna. <laughs> Not that only in my dream. In my dream, I'm dancing Ras Leela. I got up. It was such a. I was telling my husband this morning when 
when I was drinking over morning coffee, I was telling my husband about this dream I had of Krishna. And we were discussing when we were drinking coffee together in the morning. So, this, it, uh, what was that, that someone saying, I saw Krishna in a vision. Well, if you actually saw, then the, the evidence, so if you actually, actual Krishna came, then why are you still entangled in material life? So if you have a dream, it's nice, but better when you when we wake up to chant Hare Krishna. Better than having dreams of Krishna and waking up and not chanting Hare Krishna is to not have dreams and chant Hare Krishna. And if we do chant Hare Krishna when we're awake, then whether or not we get dreams, it's not that important. The perfectional stage is that day and night we'll always think of Krishna. Many times people say this, oh, I have this dream. So, oh, you have a dream, it's nice. But wake up and wake up from the dream of Maya and chant Hare Krishna. So these kind of inspirations and dreams, yeah, there are many devotees having that. Many devotees have told me. Prabhupada came to them, told different things. So, we can take, yes, that's good, it's nice, but we don't base our whole spiritual life on that. Of course, Prabhupada did, he was doing all the basic things and much more, he was very intensely serving his spiritual master. And then, in that situation, in the dream, his spiritual master told him to take sannyas. Any question about this? Krishna takes care of all our difficulties. Yoga, kshema, vahami, aham. That's not an exact translation of yoga kshema. That a materialistic person may understand it. Yoga kshema vahami aham. That may mean. Well, first, what's the first words of this verse? Huh? Ananya aschintayanta. So yeah, yeah. That comes first. You know what that means? Ananyas chinta yanta mal. Thinking of Krishna and nothing else. Ye janaf karyupasate. Te sham nityabhiyuktanam. Those are always engaged in Krishna's service. So it's not that, you know, I go up to Balaji and, uh, you know, Balaji, the, I, I did my annual darshan and put thousand rupees in the hundi and that's it for the year. Now, he'll look after me. Actually, he may. So many people are going. So, he is reciprocal. We can understand something is there. It's, he is reciprocating. Even on the mundane platform. But the for mundane people, they're satisfied. I opened my business. I made... Srinivas Venkatesh, I made him a partner in the business. And he gets 30% and I get 70%. And he looks after the business. It's all his mercy. People are doing that, right? So they get his mercy in the form of money. But they don't get his mercy in the, his full mercy in the form of the blessing to be uh, ananya bhaktas. They don't get, they get the sadharan dham. Or the, but they don't get the prain dham. The question I wanted to ask is, some people who are getting 
Yeah, but you, you, but you, you starting on a wrong premise. You translated the verse wrongly. So yoga kshema, the real yoga kshema means that which is favorable for yoga, for being linked with Krishna. So what is favorable for being linked with Krishna might be so many difficulties. So it doesn't mean of it does mean also that Krishna looks after us, but how he looks after us, it, it doesn't just mean that that uh, Krishna will provide all our material facility. He may do. Jayadvaita Maharaj is coming here in a few days, so um, we were at Rathiatra in London. We were in the park where it had finished. And we were talking and one British lady came up to us and she said, can I ask you a few questions? London accent. So she asked one and then she said, well where do you, where do you get all your money from? And Jadvaita Maharaj said, Krishna sends. Practically, I mean, who looks after him? Krishna arranges everything. He said, well, how do you eat? And Krishna sends everything. She wasn't very satisfied and she walked away. And just after that, one, dev- one devotee came up with two plates of prasadam. Would you like to take some prasadam? We didn't even know there was any prasadam arrangement. But devotee brought prasadam. Krishna arranges so like that, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur is good. How can I? I was saying in the lecture, you were saying, how can I preach? I don't have any manpower. I don't have any position in society. He didn't have a university degree. He was a university dropout. He left college. He was a failure in college. I don't have any money and punched all the devotees and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, you don't want it, we'll look after you. <laughs> so they provided so many also, things. Yeah, yeah. The point is that if a devotee gets difficulties... Uh, if a devotee gets difficulties. Everyone in this world gets difficulties. No question of if. If they increase, if they increase, yeah. even more of the devotion... He may fall out of devotional service. Yeah. That's the test. Krishna wants to see how sincere we are. Can you name some famous devotees in history, in Puranas, Mahabharat? Kunti Devi. Name some more. That's a good one. There are so many. Prahlad Maharaj, Ambarish Maharaj, Dhruv Maharaj. Draupadi, there are so many. Now, uh, all of them had many difficulties, isn't it? So, how would we know if they were great devotees if they didn't have difficulties? Anyone can say, Govinda, Govinda, Govinda. But those who go on saying Govinda, even in difficulty, they're actual devotees. That was tested. Draupadi, holding on to her sari, Govinda, Govinda, Govinda. Then let go of her sari, Govinda. And Govinda came. So that our bhakti is tested by difficulties. And those who are not uh, really interested in serving Krishna, when more difficulties come, they'll say, oh, I don't, I don't believe in all this. It's the test of faith. Ashadadhana purusha. You know this verse? Dharma syasya parantapa. Aprapya maam nivartante mrityu samsara vargmani. Krishna says that those who are not faithful on this path, they fall away. They go back to the path of mrityu, of death, of repeated birth and death. So there's a test. 
I'll ju- ju- just say a little bit more about that. At, um, at the same time, Kunti Devi was praying. Vipada Santu Tashashpa Tatra Tatra Jagat Guru Bhavato Darshanam Yatsya Apuna Bhava Darshanam She said, let there be more difficulty. This was after Kuru Kshetra War, it was a whole life of difficulty. So let there be more difficulties. Because when there are difficulties, then we think of you more. And we see you. And by seeing you, we will no longer see birth and death. But at the same time, we have to be realistic and understand that we're not all on the level of Prahlad Maharaj. So, uh, we don't deliberately invite difficulties. The world's already... Difficulties come of their own accord, as Prahlad Maharaj said. What is that? Dukyam, dukam atyam tikam yatsya. Difficulties come without asking. They come. Sukha and Dukha, they both come of their own accord. So, we try to arrange in such a way that our bhajan can go on without excessive difficulties. And we may sometimes recommend to people that you change your situation. If, it's, if, if some change that can be made that will uh, facilitate our Krishna consciousness, then we may do that. Just like... Um, I was just listening this morning how devotees were preaching in East Germany when there was the DDR. They were the most extreme communists. They were more communists than the Russians. The Germans, were, the East Germans, they, they were the most extreme communists. Very heavy communists. So devotees were going from... West Berlin and preaching them. So they made one devotee and uh, first devotee in East Germany. And uh, he ended up in prison. And But after some time they, they let him go and they threw him out to West Germany. They, they didn't know what to do with him. Uh, whatever he, he wouldn't speak to them in the prison, all he would say was Hare Krishna. Yeah. So eventually they, they didn't know what to do and they, oh, they, threw, they threw him out, go to West Germany, get out of here. So that was a better situation because in, in West Germany, at that time the devotees were also getting beaten by the police, but they didn't throw him in prison for very long. So it was a better situation for practicing Krishna consciousness. So, in some situations it may be better. Just like, and here's another example, we always, always recommend young women taking to Krishna consciousness, they should get married. And you say, why? I'm a spirit soul. You're a spirit soul, but you're in a body that uh, brings a certain type of conditioning, which... Uh, is always recommended in Shastra that this is what's to be done with this condition is that there should be a husband. That's the prescription. And then they get married and they don't have ch- they don't want to have children. It's in the modern age and others they don't have children. But yeah, you should have children also. You know, I don't want. I just want Chan Hare Krishna. Anyway, you have children. So, uh, all these prescriptions are there in Shastra to help us in the difficult journey of life so that we can come to the ultimate purpose of life which is to become fully detached from the body and fully attached to Krishna. But to do so, in, in some cases it might seem that uh, just like, if, if we understand that we should become fully detached from the body, then we should tell everyone 
no one should marry and uh, everyone should just fully surrender to Krishna immediately. That's true. Actually, no one should marry. Those who are married should immediately renounce, give up their families and finish everything and just be Krishna conscious. But, we can say that, but it won't work because people have attachments. So, it's advised to live with those attachments in a situation that is more favorable for overcoming those attachments. So, in family life, chant Hare Krishna. Or even someone might be so, they might be so advanced that they can leave their family and simply take sannyasa. We may tell anywhere you stay and show others how to practice Krishna consciousness in family life. So it might seem contradictory that why why should we tell anyone to get married? But that it may see just like that example, the fever is increasing. If someone comes to the doctor and says, I took the medicine, the fever is increasing, the doctor may say, Good in some circumstances. Is that true? If the fever increases, not in Western medicine, but in traditional medicine, if the fever comes up, that means it's getting burned out. So that's, it will increase and then you'll be cured, it will come down. So sometimes it might seem that the fever is increasing, but that's a sign actually that the cure is being affected. I think in Western medicine that is just suppressing all the symptoms. So we have to take guidance how to apply Shastra. Ananda Mai Prabhu, those who are from Hyderabad, they all know him. He, I'd been in India for, uh, or based in India for, uh, let me see, it was about, yeah, ten years before I came to South India. I came to stay in India, an Indian area, in 1976. And I'd never come to South India since 1986. And of course, I spend more time here in South India now than for many years in other places. So he said to me, you come, you'll like it. And actually I like it because... In South India, many people still today, they, they know shlokas and we can preach with preaching from Shastra and people appreciate that. Many people appreciate that. So many people, you're from South India? From North India? All right, anyway. You're in South India. So many people, they, they, they very much appreciate that in South India, especially in South India. In North India also. But if we preach quoting Shastra, people appreciate that, and many people, they they know that. And in South India, especially, the, in our temples, they like to they'll teach the children shlokas or learn. So people appreciate that. So yeah, I like it because I like to preach through Shastra. But uh, people may learn, but they need guidance also. It's not just by learning shlokas. Just like I was saying, Vastu experts. How did they all become Vastu experts? They all read some book and they became a Vastu expert. I don't know if there's any parampara going on. It's all theoretical knowledge. So, book knowledge, we're telling, distribute these books so that people can read these books. But some personal guidance is needed also. Otherwise, we may think that yoga kshema means Krishna is going to get me a new car. That's not what Krishna means. <laughs> yoga kshema for Dhruva Maharaj was leaves, dry leaves in the forest. And then he gave that up too. Then he was taking air only. Hare Krishna. All right, we'll take one last question. Do you see uh, devotees that come to Krishna consciousness 
You've been practicing as a brahmachari for 30 years? 32. 32. 32 year brahmachari. Living in Vrindavan, mostly? No? I only see you in Vrindavan. Mostly. You were living in Vrindavan. One point? No. Yeah. All right. No, oh, well, uh, about nine, sometime I was there. You were there. You stayed there maybe during Kartik. Yeah. Long time ago. Yeah, anyway. Oh, all right. Just coming back. All right. I was on Padiatra for how long? Two years. Two years on Padiatra. That's quite an achievement. Want some difficulties? First time coming here was 1993, <laughs> 94, at yeah. the same time. Okay. All right. So, what's the question? Yeah, so we you you don't want to get married. Right? Mm-hmm. So nice to meet you. And so, uh, devotees sit uh, on top, and then they reach a point where they may not have full conviction which way to go. At some point, they may be, should I stay Brahmacharya? Should I stay Brahmacharya? Should I get married? Or should I get married? Usually if people ask this, we tell them to get married. Because if you're not sure, you're not going to stay a brahmacharya. Although you never know, there can be cases. There were some time, I mean over 30 years ago in London, there were two brahmacharis who were going to get married. And they were already fixed up to get married. And then they thought, no... And they didn't get married. One is uh, Prabhu Vishnu Swami. <laughs> the, other, the other is Maha Vishnu Swami. <laughs> so, but generally, if if you're this way, flip flop this way, that's why I said to you, don't ask me. Don't ask me. Bhishma. Why is he called Bhishma? He was considered such a, well, especially for a kshatriya. Brahmin, to be a brahmachari, they have that kind of samskar from before birth. But for a kshatriya, kshatriya has many wives and girlfriends on the side too. They're, they're, for, for them to be a brahmachari, that was considered a very great vow. If we can do it, it's very good. You can do it, it's very good. You need. It's easier in India. Still. still the culture is supporting. But uh, you're living in America. Is it? Mostly? Yeah. India is very suitable.